reading comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6 and chapter 7. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. <coughs> And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. <coughs> But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people that some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes to us from St. Peter's first letter, chapter 2. Like newborn infants, Long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if 
and indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy, a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined <laughs> to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? And the Father is in me. The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. 
Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that, my, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I myself am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Make no mistake, these words that Jesus spoke cause all kinds of trouble for the world in which we live today. You see, according to the world, these words are exclusive and intolerant. According to the world, they make an absolute truth claim for a people that thinks truth is relative and subjective. These words of Jesus are beloved because they condemn the mass of humanity to eternal suffering and death. And so the world says, wait a minute, these can't really be the words that Jesus spoke. No, Jesus is much more loving and accepting of all sorts of people. He would never say anything like this. So maybe this is what Jesus really said. I am one way amongst many ways. I am one truth amongst many truths. I am a life just like any other life. And you can get to the Father in multiple ways. I'm just one that some people like to take. Jesus is good for some, it is said. But Moses is just as good for others. Or why not try Muhammad or Buddha or one of the other spiritual gurus or prophets? I mean, in the end, aren't we all going to that same better place? You know, that nebulous, better, disembodied existence where we're not encumbered by all the things of this world. One day we'll all just commune with God and the universe. Or perhaps you have heard some people say to you, well, isn't Judaism a monotheistic religion? Don't they worship the God of Abraham? And don't Christians worship the God of Abraham? And don't Muslims worship the God of Abraham? And if they're all worshiping the God of Abraham, then aren't they all serving and believing in the same God? So whichever one of those three that you follow, and as long as you're sincere and loving your neighbor, well then, well then you'll be assured of paradise and eternal life to come. I have run into many such people that have fought this way and have expressed themselves in this very manner. And in fact, some of them confess to be Christians. I suppose it shouldn't surprise us even that some Christians might say such things for two main reasons. The first being, Christians are still sinners. And as sinners, we often fail to heed to God's word, to believe in it, and to follow it, and to put it into practice. And often, we are led astray by the prevailing thoughts and ideas in the world around us. And secondly, well, Christians get very uneasy at the mention of hell, and I can understand why. Who wants to think about anyone suffering for eternity apart from the gracious love of the Father? It's quite horrible. And so it's much easier and convenient to think 
that somehow, some way, at the very last, well, all people will just be saved in the end. But no matter how troublesome Jesus' words may be to the world today and even to some of us as Christians, nevertheless, Jesus' words are his words. He said, I myself am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus did not speak these words, however, to cause extra trouble to the world. And he certainly didn't speak them to cause trouble for any of his disciples who believed in him. Jesus spoke these words out of love and compassion for his disciples. He spoke them out of love and compassion for a world covered in darkness and death and ruin that he came to rescue and save, to redeem by giving of his own life for this world. You see, Jesus knew who he was, the Son of the Father, sent on his God-given mission to save the world, to give his life in the place of the many. Jesus knew he was the only one, and there was no other to do what he was appointed to do. For three some years, Jesus' disciples gathered about him, and they heard his preaching and teaching, and they saw his signs, wonders, and miracles, and they came to believe indeed that Jesus was the one sent from the Father, that he was the Christ, the Son of God. They trusted in him, their hopes were in him, even though they didn't quite know what that fully meant, that Jesus was the Christ and God's Son. They followed him, they followed him up until the very end, until that first Holy Thursday, where they were gathered together and the climactic events of Jesus' life's ministry were about to unfold as his mission was about to be completed, as he was about to give his life for the world. And Jesus <laughs> spoke words to his disciples not to cause them trouble, but to prepare them, to teach them just what kind of Christ he was. Christ that had come to give his life. A Christ that came to demonstrate the Father's love for a sinful world. And so he told them that he was going away and that they could not come after him. He told them other disturbing news that one of them would betray him and that Peter would deny him three times before the cock crowed. But again, Jesus didn't speak these words to cause them trouble, but to prepare them for what must be. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. In the house of my Father are many dwellings. But if not, then why did I say to you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I am going to prepare a place for you, again, I am coming, and I will receive you toward myself, in order that where I myself am, there also you may be. And where I am going, you know the way. Jesus was sent by the Father in the fullness of the Holy Spirit to give his life for the world and to take it back up again. 
again. He is the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the source and the first fruits of all those who will be raised from the dead on the last day. Jesus is the eternal word of the Father who became flesh and dwelt among us, who became one with us, that he might give up his flesh for the very life of the world that he created and yet rebelled. Jesus, true God and true man, was indeed crucified. He died. He was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father in glory and power, and there he lives, and he reigns for his people. Providing grace upon grace and mercy upon mercy to you and me and all who believe in his name. And he has promised to return. And at his return on the last day, then all the things spoken of by St. John in Revelation 21 will come to pass. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things passed away. This is our great Christian hope. The return of our Lord Jesus Christ and our own resurrection from the dead is making all things new and us dwelling with our God unending. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do not be troubled for Jesus is the way. He is the means by which you and I, sinners though we may be, come to the Father and have union and communion with Him. For He is our great Redeemer. He is the one through whom the greater Exodus and Passover has taken place. For He has given His life for each of you and for all the world. And there is no other that has done this. Moses did not die for Israel nor for the world. Jesus did. And yet Moses himself gives witness and testifies to Jesus, the one lifted up on the cross that whoever looks and believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And what then of Muhammad or Buddha or all these other so-called religious leaders and prophets and gurus? Well, they are ignorant and blind when it comes to God, and they know nothing. And any who follow their ways will only stumble into further ruin and darkness finally eternal death. Because Jesus only is the way to the Father. There is no other. He is the one who reveals that God is good and gracious and loving, merciful, compassionate. But if you or I or any other person 
person looks to God and tries to get to him outside of Jesus Christ, well, we will not find a merciful and loving God. We will only find a God of wrath and vengeance, a God who terrorizes and destroys our wicked idolatry. You and I are not free to create our own way or path to God. There is only one way, and his name is Jesus, the crucified and risen one. Do not be troubled. Jesus is the truth. He is the full embodiment of God's gracious favor and attitude and will towards sinners like yourselves. He is to believe, be believed and trusted in, for his word and promise is certain. He has proved it by giving himself for you and taking back of his life again. And he has promised to return for each one of you. Jesus is not one truth amongst many. He is not a mere, mere myth or fairy tale. He is indeed the eternal Son of God, the divine Logos, the Word, the wisdom, the reason of God come in the flesh. Through Him all creation was made and is held together, and through Him is being redeemed and made new. Is true God and true man. One with you and I and our humanity, knowing our sufferings and our temptations, yet he is distinct from us in this respect only, without sin. And he has given his precious body and blood into death that sinners like us in this dark world might live. He is the truth. He reveals the Father's love, heart, will, mind that is beyond our understanding. And if you and I or any other would want to know the will and mind of God, then we need not look any further or any place else but to our crucified and risen for looking for secret wisdoms in the earth and looking to this thing or that thing that human beings have created or looking to another human being or even into your own heart, well, there you will only fall find lies, deceit, deceptions that are meant to take you away from God. But looking to Jesus, trusting in Him, there is certainty of God's love and His mercy and favor even for you. Do not be troubled. Jesus is the life. He is the source of all creation, of all living things. He is the source of our spiritual union with God, our restored and repaired relationship with the Father. For Jesus is the one and only mediator who stands between God and man. And through his body, we come into communion with God. And through Jesus, we are so privileged and bold to call God our Father. Jesus is the source of our life here now by faith, for he has breathed out upon you and me his Holy Spirit, that we might believe the promises of God, that we might receive his good gifts, and that we might look forward to his final coming and his giving to us the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Yes, apart from Jesus in his word and his sending of the Spirit, 
none could come to him. But he has completed his God-given task. He has died and risen and ascended to the Father's right hand. It uh, works through the gospel to call, gather, and enlighten sinners like you and me. That we might say, indeed, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, The words which I myself am speaking to you, I am not speaking for myself, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. But if not, believe according to these works. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me the works which I myself am doing, also that one will do, and even greater than these, he will do, because I am going to the Father. And whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, in order that the Father might be glorified in the Son. Whatever you ask me in my name, I myself and do it. Jesus' words and works are that which his Father gave him to say and to do. And he has done no other. They have culminated in his death for your sins and in his glorious resurrection. And this great work of redemption that Christ did is unique and unrepeatable, and it is the very source of your faith. It is the source of your life and your salvation. And yet, Jesus, after his resurrection, did not start proclaiming his name to everyone. Instead, he chose to appear to his eleven, and he came to them and showed to them his marks of glory. And he said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. The apostles who saw Jesus with their own eyes risen from the dead and heard his own words spoken by their, or heard with their own ears his words spoken to them, these apostles have given witness to Jesus. They have spread his name throughout the ages. Their witness has been recorded in the Holy Scriptures that you and I and all others might believe and be certain that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And countless people, because of the witness and testimony of these apostles, have been baptized. <laughs> they have received new birth from water and the Spirit. They have been given Jesus' body and blood to eat. And they have given witness even to you and to me who are here today. And we too are witnesses in our own right. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, as St. Peter said. Once we we're not a people, but now we are a people. <coughs> and what are we to do as God's people? But to believe and rejoice in his exclusive and wonderful promises in Christ Jesus. To rest assured that your sins and mine are forgiven and that a glorious inheritance awaits us. But also in the meantime to pray. To pray diligently for the salvation of the world for our families, friends, and neighbors that yet do not call on the name of Jesus for salvation. 
He has called you and me to serve them, to bear witness to them of the unsurpassing love of the Father come in His Son. The one who has given His life for the world. And so, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is not unloving and it is not intolerant when you dare to speak the name of Jesus to others, when you are bold to pray in the name of Jesus for others. Because you see, outside of Jesus, there is no hope. Outside of Jesus, there is only sin and death and the devil. But in Jesus, there is life eternal. Do not be troubled, brothers and sisters, because the world hates Jesus and the world may hate you as you proclaim his name. That is what will happen. Jesus has told us to expect it. But be comforted and be encouraged that your Lord, who gave himself for you, is with you. That the same spirit that was upon him that he may complete his mission, he has given to you to believe and serve your neighbors as his witness day by day. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through him. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his return.